The Fallout 4 legendary item system can be very frustrating for new players. There are so many awesome weapon and armor combinations such as the devastating explosive minigun and the instigating Goss rifle, but the problem is that these cannot be found in any guaranteed locations and you're entirely dependent upon luck from the drops of random legendary enemies throughout the game. Many people work around this by using mods such as the legendary modification mod created by Junks808 which allows you to modify armor and weapons with legendary modification occasions at workbenches. Additionally, you can use console commands to add any legendary prefix you want to any weapon or armor. However, what if you want to find a legitimate way to target specific legendary items without using mods or console commands? Is it possible, or are we destined to depend solely on the random number gods to bless us with the best legendary items instead of completely useless ones? By understanding the way legendary enemies and their legendary items are generated, we can use save timings and draw distance to maximize our chances of finding what we're looking for. I do think it is important to understand why this works so you can troubleshoot if you run into problems, but for for those who don't want to see how the sausage gets made, I'll just get right into this method which I have tweaked to be as efficient as possible. I do recommend sticking around for the explanation afterwards though. The first thing you'll need to do is unlock Nuka World. You only need to get past the initial gauntlet quest to start this farm. Don't worry if you don't have Nuka World, I'll show an alternate method later that works in the base game. When you arrive in Nuka World, make a circle around the north and west side of the map and approach this location which is marked by a large sign. Move down to the second ledge, but before dropping off make a hard save. I'll refer to this as save 1. Then run down to the rusted tank and as soon as you touch it make another save which is save 2. Now run past the bushes and check out the 5 gang members. If none are legendary reload save 1 and start again. If 1 is legendary then load save 2. This will guarantee that the same enemy will be legendary every time we reload but his loot hasn't been decided yet. This is helpful as often when you're farming here none of the gang members will be legendary which wastes time. Right as you load save 2 quickly save again. This will be save 3. Now, go kill the legendary enemy and check the loot. If it's not an item you're looking for, reload save 2. This will reset the loot to a random legendary item. Be sure to resave save 3 again every time you reload save 2. Keep doing this until you find an item you want which has the wrong legendary effect. Save 3 locks the item but rerolls the legendary prefix, so load save 3 and keep checking the item until you get the legendary prefix you want. You can repeat this process as many times as you want, simply head up north a ways and then head back down to reset the encounter and start again. Now I'd like to explain exactly why this works and why I think this is the most efficient method for farming legendary items in Fallout 4. First of all, Fallout 4 doesn't simultaneously load everything in the world because that would take far too long, so instead it loads cells as you move around the world or when you enter a building. When a cell loads where enemies are intended to be, the game spawns in all of the enemies. Some of those enemies have a possibility of being legendary, so the game randomly chooses if those enemies are legendary or not. If your game game difficulty is increased, the chances of these enemies being legendary also increases, so if you're able, it's always better to play on very hard difficulty to maximize your chances of encountering legendary creatures. Once the game decides if any enemies are legendary, it then decides which legendary item to put on the enemies. This item is placed in addition to the normal items they would spawn with. The possible items are based on the level of the enemy, but more importantly, half the time this will be a piece of armor, a third of the time this will be a gun, and a sixth of the time it will be a melee weapon. The type of enemy has no bearing on the type of legendary items they drop, only their level matters. Once the item is chosen, the game decides which legendary prefix to put on the item. There are some rules for which legendary prefix can go on which items, I'll put that info in the description. Additionally, the game tries to prevent you from seeing the same legendary prefix too often by removing it from the possible prefixes until you see some others. Eventually, it will become available again though, so if you're not seeing the legendary prefix you want, farm other legendary items for a while to cycle through the possible prefixes and then try again. Playing the game normally, all of these actions from enemies spawning to legendary prefixes being assigned are finished without you even realizing it. However, players notice something interesting happening when they entered buildings such as the National Guard training yard and that leads to the common method for legendary farming. When you enter a building, an autosave is generated. What people noticed is that when you reload this autosave, any legendary item you find will be the same item with a different prefix. This is because the autosave save happens to occur between the legendary item being chosen and the legendary prefix being assigned. So the original version of this method which works in the base game is as follows. Make a hard save outside the building, enter the building which causes an auto save, and check for legendary enemies with legendary items. If you don't find a legendary enemy or you find a legendary enemy but they don't have a legendary item you want, reload the hard save outside.
outside. If you find a legendary item you want with the wrong prefix, reload the autosave instead and continue doing this until you get the item you want. Using this method is a massive improvement over just attempting to find a specific item you're hoping for randomly. However, there are two problems with this. First, because you are usually reloading outside of the building, you have to sit through two reloads for every attempt. Second, even in the best buildings such as the National Guard Training Yard and even on very hard difficulty, you will often not find any legendary enemy, meaning that that time is completely wasted. Over the past two years, I've been attempting to find a solution to both of these problems to maximize the farming efficiency and I recently figured it out and that's the method I described previously. The reason this method works is because the saves are targeted at specific points with save 1 occurring before the enemies spawn, save 2 occurring after the enemies spawn and the legendary enemies are chosen, and the third occurring after the legendary item is generated but before the legendary prefix is chosen. This method has the benefits of only requiring a single reload as well as guaranteeing that you will always see a legendary enemy. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It took some tinkering, but I believe that this method is the most efficient way to farm legendary items without using mods or console commands. If this doesn't work exactly how I describe it, you may have to play around with the timings of your saves to dial it in. All that being said, if you feel like this is way too much effort, I definitely don't blame you. The legendary modification mod is a great middle ground between the effort required for my method and the blatant use of console commands, and I highly recommend it. I do a lot of crazy mod free, console free, and glitch free strategies on this channel, so if that's something that appeals to you, definitely leave a like and subscribe, and remember until next time to survive in the wasteland, you gotta be efficient.